Hello and welcome to a new game from the CCC 11's Round 1 tournament. Here are the standings. Uh, Stockfish is leading by a whopping 3 points, let's say, because he's uh, 2 games ahead. And Lila is battling with Lilenstein for the second place. Now, in today's uh, game, we have Ethereal versus Lila. And after the move d4, we are suddenly out of the book. And uh, it's very interesting to see now what Lila's preferences are in, uh, in this position. Well, she played here knight f6, going for a Indian game, some sort. And here Ethereal played c4. So they are both choosing, uh, they are both choosing the most popular moves. C4 is uh, White's most popular move and also most ambitious move since uh, White fights for the center. And here again, Black has a lot of choices. Lila went for e6, so maybe uh, trying a Nimzo after something like knight c3. We don't know. What we know though is that she was expecting here a Catalan with g3. And then she wanted to give this check on b4, and after bishop d2 blocking the queen, she wanted to drop back the bishop, and then after bishop g2 play d5, and after knight f3 castles. So this is what she envisioned, and there are many many games in this uh, position. Carson has a lot of games, uh, he played it with both colors. But we don't have a Catalan because Ethereal went for knight f3, an empty Nimzo, avoiding the spin on, on the knight on c3. And it's now her turn or his turn uh, to uh, fantasize about uh, a position. And he was expecting here b6, the Queen's Indian defense, after which he wanted to play a3 and after bishop b7, knight c3 and then d5. So this is what Ethereal was expecting to happen. And in this position also there are many games. Uh, Kasparov played against Kramnik, a couple of games in this one. So it's quite a popular uh, uh, opening too. But of course this didn't happen either because Lila went for d5. And now after c takes on d5 and e takes on d5, we have the famous Kasbat structure on the board. Uh, named after the famous health resort in uh, the Czech Republic, also known as uh, Carlo Vivari. And there were many, many tournaments played here in the past. So here now after knight c3, we have c6. And after white will play e3, we have the Kasbat structure on the board. Now, what are the plans here? Well, <clears throat> let's start off with white. White has a semi-open c file. So... He would like to place this rook on c1 and attack c6 and um, also try to attack something on c7 or c8. But as long as this pawn is on c6, defended by b7, there are little chances for, for success. So one of white's plans is to play b4, b5 and then take this pawn on c6 and after b takes on c6, now the c6 pawn would be a backward pawn which is not defended anymore by another pawn, therefore it's weak and this rook could uh, target it. Now, if after b4, b5, uh, black takes here, then d5 becomes suddenly isolated and probably white will uh, take back on b5 with a piece and then white will have pressure down the b and c files and d5 will be an isolated pawn. So this is probably the worst outcome for black. Another option is after b5 to play c5, but this is also not good because after white takes, the pawn is again isolated and attackable on this semi-open d5. So actually best for black is just to allow white, once it gets with the pawn on b5, to take here and then uh, try to hang on to, um, to the pawn. Now, this is uh, known as the minority attack for white, this idea, because... White uses his minority uh, on the queen side to attack black's majority and uh, usually happens with uh, b4, a4 and uh, b5 and many times a rook is on b1 to support this idea of b5. This is one plan that white can do. Now sometimes after e3 this knight develops to e2 and then white has another plan 
you can play f3 and e4 and uh, break in the center try to establish two very strong pawns in the center and if black takes then white can recapture with the f pawn and then maybe even play e5 to chase this knight away and then knight e4 and um, white can get a, a kingside attack so these are the two plans but with the knight on f3 pretty much the minority attack is the most uh, normal plan let's say and in the meantime black has a lot of space on the king side he has the the e4 square to work with and many times a knight lands here and he has a lot of space so he can maneuver his pieces to the king side and try to get a, an attack on the white king for example after castling short and in an ideal world black would like to lift this rook to e6 and then maybe move it to g6 or h6 and attack these pawns and the rook on on the on this third rank would also conveniently defend maybe this um, weakened c6 pawn so these these are the plans in an ideal world let's see now what happened in in this game now with c6 it is pretty clear that with these pawns here the bishop doesn't have a future on b7 or h6 playing b6 would weaken c6 too much in this uh, open c5 so this bishop pretty much wants to go either to f5 or g4 these are the two most active squares for the light square bishop on e6 it would be too passive so ethereal played now queen c2 pretty much ruling out both of these ideas because now if the bishop goes here then it runs into knight e5 attacking the bishop so there's no pin on a queen there so instead lila now played g6 her idea is to, to play now bishop f5 supported by the pawn on g6 and here ethereal played bishop g5 pinning this knight bishop uh, f5 is a bit premature now because white has queen b3 attacking b7 and with um, also an attack on this knight on f6 this uh, black queen would be overloaded could not defend everything so that wouldn't be good um, for example if b6 this is already losing for black because of uh, e4 this knight is pinned can't take there and um, after bishop takes on e4 knight takes pawn takes there's knight e5 suddenly attacking on f7 and uh, after queen e7 uh, queen h3 is very strong threatening a check here and uh, black pretty much loses this knight there's nothing to do here for example bishop g7 queen c8 check queen blocks queen takes king takes and now knight takes on f7 wins a rook so bishop f5 premature that's why we have bishop e7 first and now after e3 bishop f5 is good but now now after queen b3 queen b6 uh, simply is good for black when uh, white doesn't really want to take here because this just strengthens uh, black's uh, pawn structure on the queen side now this rook suddenly has a target on on the a5 so this wouldn't be good while um, in the same time black uh, can take here maybe and uh, in some cases and then white would have uh, two isolated pawns here on on uh, b2 and b3 which wouldn't be so great so queen b3 here is not so good but now after e3 ethereal is in time to meet bishop f5 with bishop d3 we have bishop takes queen takes and now castles castles and knight d7 and in this position which was still played a lot the main plan is to start the minority attack with rook b1 and b4 and usually black plays here a5 to stop those pawns but in this game we have another idea an idea played by chinese player bu yangshi quite a lot and that is to transfer this bishop to f4 where um, this bishop would be much better placed now there's no point in attacking this knight with uh, this knight on d7 and the bishop on e7 there's no pin on that knight so the bishop would be much active much more active on on this diagonal but if the bishop goes here now then knight h5 hits it so instead we have h3 first and this would allow now this bishop to hide we have rook e8 and now bishop f4 and a5 lila wants to uh, to expand these with these pawns and uh, maybe play knight b6 and knight c4 so we have queen c2 bishop f8 now 
in this position b5 and knight b6 are mostly played but we have bishop f8 so this is a pretty much a, like a novelty in this position but it's a logical move it allows this rook to uh, to guard d4 and now we have rook e1 and queen b6 another very very good move the, the queen on, on d8 wasn't doing much but on b6 is attacking both b2 and d4 limiting white's options we have rook b1 and now queen a7 probably allowing this uh, this pawn to go up we have rook c1 and now queen back knight e1 and now knight h5 but the bishop drops back to h2 and now knight g7 very interesting uh, maneuver this knight is going to e6 now so the knight on f6 was pretty much uh, preventing any e4 and uh, was threatening maybe to go to e4 in some cases but now after knight h5 the knight goes to um, to e6 and from e6 it will put pressure on d4 we have queen a7 now knight f3 and now knight e6 rook e1 and now b5 and b5 we can c6 but lila is preparing a4 and then knight b6 and knight c4 when in the absence of the light square bishops this knight on c4 will be much stronger and it's it can be attacked with b3 since the spawn on a4 so that would be quite a strong uh, maneuver and the knight on c4 would also shield this weakened c6 pawn we have now knight e2 rook c8 defending the pawn knight c1 and now knight b6 knight e2 a4 and now rook d1 and we can see that Lila made quite a lot of progress on the, on the queen side. She's ready now to jump to c4 with the knight. And in the meantime, Ethereal is a bit undecided on, on, on what to do here. Maybe even clueless about how to... Uh, uh, about a, a working plan here. We have now queen e7. And now with the queen side sorted out, Lila is preparing to, um, to gain some advantages in the center and on the king side. We have knight e5 and now knight g5. This knight is going to e4. And this knight on e5 is attacking c6, but Lila is not worried at all about that pawn because if the knight takes here, then after queen d7, it's pretty much lost. Tyrio could defend it with rook c1, but after rook e6, there's nothing to do. The knight will be lost. So Lila is not afraid about that. She played knight g5, intending knight e4. We have bishop attacking the knight, but now knight e4 and knight c3 attacking here but now we have f6 chasing this knight away and then the queen will be able to uh, to defend the knight on uh, on e4 if knight e4 now then after pawn takes on e4 this knight is still attacked and he doesn't really have squares now if it goes to to g4 then it gets trapped with h5 or um, or rather if it goes here then the bishop gets trapped so uh, that's not a good option and if it takes on c6 then again it will be trapped in similar fashion as before so that's not an option so instead of knight takes on on e4 we have knight d3 but now the queen is defending here we have g5 bishop h2 and now finally the knight jumps into c4 we have rook e1 queen f7 rook c1 and now knight e2 look at those knights deep into white's position we have rook d1 and now knight b3 what a nice pair of knights knight e2 going for c1 and uh, exchanging uh, this knight we have queen g6 knight c1 knight takes rook takes and now rook e7 and in this position black is better lila evaluates this at around minus one and ethereal you know, pretty much agrees the problem here is that ethereal's rooks are very very passive and they don't have good ways of activating uh, lila has e4 well under control and this knight is very strong attacking on b2 white's position is, is is quite passive and it's very hard to to play f3 and e4 with uh, so much pressure here on, on e3 we have now knight c5 and ethereal goes for a queen exchange but the queen exchange doesn't really help his position we have now rook e8 g4 bishop g7 and now knight d3 and rook e4 and we can see that white's position is not better at all there's too much pressure on e3 for 
for uh, moves like f3 and why it doesn't have breaks no breaks available here uh, h4 is not very useful b3 not useful weakening this one and in the meantime Lila has uh, ideas of improving the king and maybe getting in h5 or f5 and in the future maybe even c5 or b4 could be useful breaks we have bishop f8 now uh, pretty much guarding these squares if the knight lands there then the bishop will chop it off we have bishop g3 king f7 rook c1 bishop e7 king g2 and now rook h8 going for uh, this break with h5 rook g1 h5 and uh, you can't really allow uh, lila to take here so we have pawn takes rook takes and now this is also an isolated pawn and ethereal tries to play here now h4 and uh, give up that pawn in order to win the f4 square for uh, one of these pieces we have lila taking on h4 and now bishop f4 bishop f8 and now king h3 ethereal wants to play rook g4 and maybe take this pawn but after rook back and rook g4 bishop e7 now is very strong ethereal has to think twice about taking this pawn because after rook takes rook takes king takes rook g8 cutting the king away from the rest of the board is very very strong and uh, in the meantime lila's king could maybe march up the board and uh, do some attacking so this is uh, not very good also the rook can maybe invade to g2 or g1 at some point not very good so instead of rook h4 ethereal played rook g1 so we have rook h7 and now bishop h2 again taking this pawn doesn't work and in in this position is even worse now not because uh, ethereal loses uh, this rook on, on g1 after this check because the king is in time to go back and defend it but the problem is that without the rooks without at least one rook lila has some tricks on the queen side here she could play b4 threatening to take here and after pawn takes knight b2 is very very strong and now this pawn is unstoppable after knight takes and a3 this knight is in, in an unfortunate uh, position and he's not able to stop this pawn and the bishop is also not around to help so this would be terrible ethereal needs at least one pair of rooks to uh, to stop tricks like this so instead we have bishop h2 and now rook h8 bishop f4 bishop f8 rook g6 now and here lila goes for uh, exchanging one pair of rooks but remember ethereal needs one one rook at least on the board we have bishop f8 and now bishop c7 this is a move that lila doesn't like at all for black she evaluates this at minus 2.1 and ethereal evaluates at minus 1.6 this now allows lila to play bishop h6 and um, and add uh, even more pressure on e3 we have rook e2 king e6 bishop back to h2 king f5 Lila's king is, is marching up the board and the king wants to get to f3 obviously and uh, attack the rook and the pawn we have now bishop c7 king e4 and uh, now knight e1 preventing the king from entering into into these squares we have now king back knight d3 rook g8 bishop h2 king e4 now again knight e1 bishop g5 and uh, now bishop g1 ethereal tries to to stay passive f3 seems to be like uh, an idea but it's not a good one because ethereal already has a weakness on b2 that it has to defend and now with with f3 and king f5 he's now weakening this one this one is hanging so we have to push e4 also but now after pawn takes pawn takes and king g6 White has suddenly three pawns that it needs to uh, worry about whereas before there was only one uh, these pawns look nice but they are attackable especially by the rook so it's not not such a great idea instead we have bishop g1 staying passive this way these pawns are at least defended and the only weakness is f2 but it's very hard to attack that one so the idea of staying passive is better for white we have now king back to f5 and now bishop h2 rook a8 knight d3 and now rook c8 
knight b4 and in this position Lila would love to play king uh, d4 and, and king f3 but unfortunately doesn't work yet because here Ethereal has king g4 and suddenly he's, he would be threatening mate with f3 and um, this would force now Lila to, to give up the bishop in order to be able to, to escape after f3 but after pawn takes bishop this is just an equal game now so king e4 not good yet instead we have bishop h6 clearing the g file this would now allow Lila to, to play king e4 and, uh, and king f3 uh, because the rook can uh, give a check on g8 for example king takes here and uh, Lila's king will get there there's no more mate here check and uh, king f3 and the uh, black's position is uh, completely winning now so <clears throat> This is not possible after bishop h6. We have knight d3 and now bishop g5, knight b4 and bishop h6 again, knight d3. And now since uh, no progress can be made here on the king side, we have bishop f8 changing plans. The bishop takes now away c5 and b4 from the knight. And the bishop also doesn't have many squares uh, it can go to. Uh, all these squares are taken away from it uh, it could go maybe to to f4 but now c5 opening up the c5 is suddenly a good plan for for lila taking this pawn is still not good because now lila could play knight takes on b2 so there are a lot of hidden tactics in in this position if now the rook takes here then bishop a3 is strong and uh, this pawn uh, is very dangerous if the rook goes to a2 then just rook a8 check and uh, white loses a piece so king h4 not possible we have f3 now here by ethereal but this weakens this e3 pawn and this is uh, allowing now lila to uh, go for a winning endgame she played here rook e8 attacking here we have bishop defending but now bishop d6 and the bishop exchange is pretty much forced we have knight b4 counter attacking this pawn on c6 but lila doesn't mind she just played knight back to c4 and she's intending to take here the truth is that after the smoke clears and they exchange the pieces the black king on f5 is is much more active than the white king and it's much closer to these pawns and that gives black a decisive advantage we have knight takes on c6 and now rook takes on e3 if this rook avoids the trade then uh, king f4 is strong so we have instead knight e7 check but now after king e6 both of these pieces are attacked so the rook exchange is forced we have knight takes and now the knight goes away but now lila has knight f5 both defending this pawn and attacking this one uh, intending king d6 chasing the knight away and then taking on d4 so black's position is completely winning here we have king g2 king d6 knight b4 and now knight takes on d4 knight d3 taking away d squares from the king but lila can uh, advance with the king by playing knight c6 and after f4 d4 and this now allows the king to to get into white's position like this of course lila wants to get to b3 and uh, attack these pawns on b2 and a3 we have knight f2 king d5 king f3 king c4 king e4 king b3 king d5 now chasing the knight king d6 and now king takes on b2 and if now ethereal would have played king d7 to continue attacking this knight lila can just ignore that just take on a3 and then um, after king takes on d8 just play b4 and one of these pawns of course will queen very very soon for lila so instead of king d7 we have king back to d5 king takes on a3 king takes on d4 and now we have king b3 knight d3 and now knight d6 check king d5 knight g7 knight e1 and a3 and that pawn is unstoppable we have knight d3 king c3 knight c1 king c2 knight a2 and now h3 this other pawn that ethereal didn't have time to capture is now moving up the board we have knight b4 check king b2 king d6 and now a2 king d5 and finally 
Leela has a new queen. And believe it or not, in this position where Leela has a queen and a knight against a knight, the game lasted for another 40 moves. Mind-boggling, I know. How can a game last so long with a queen on the board in this position? Well, we have knight d3 check and now king c2. Knight b4 check and now king c3. King c5 and now king b3. And this king is embarking on a nice little journey to the king side here to attack this pawn. We have knight c6 and the king slowly moving up the board. And we even have knight e5 offering a knight, but Lila doesn't take. And now the king will uh, soon get to f5. Lila gave up a pawn there. And uh, now we have Harry moving up the board. We have Lila giving up the knight. And then we have a check. And soon Harry will promote. We have some checks. And uh, after some more moves, eventually we have knight e3. And in this position, Lila gives up the queen. And now we have king b7. And now finally Harry promotes to a horse. And now we have king a7 and queen b8 check. A second queen sacrifice. When have you seen two queen sacks in a game? We have king takes on b8. This time ethereal uh, doesn't have a choice. Has to take. And now we have knight g3. And finally this knight cleared the way. And uh, now forest can move up the board very very fast here. And now we have a new queen. And finally the game ends with a mate on f8. What a game again. A very nice positional game played here by Lila in this very famous Kasbat structure. In the end I would like to thank to Barry Fortune for his $10 contribution. And of course, thanks also to René, Adolf, Mark, Gary, Guilherme, Sebastian, Todor and Radu for their support. Please subscribe, like and share and check out some of these other videos on the right. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.